Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 4 minute news feed for October 9th, 2017. This is Beyond Wisdom again with another video. And in this video we are showcasing clips of Rise of the Tomb Raider on Xbox One. This is uh, some of my playthrough from uh, earlier. But the reason why I'm actually showcasing Rise of the Tomb Raider is that it's getting a lot of press lately because of the fact that it is getting a really, really great port on the Xbox One X. This uh, port is being ported by Nixus. Nixus actually has a really good track record of making their games really shine and I really can't wait for the 4K upgrade on the X. And uh, Due to 6thAxis.com, this is part of their work, and I'll quote this as is. This is the work of Square Enix's going to port houses, Nix's. They've been here before in a lot of ways with the PC version of the game a few months back in 2016, and then the Pro version, which was around the same time last year, which reached 4K checkerboarding. The Xbox One X one ups both of these with full native 4K at 30 frames per second and a few other options for higher frame rates. Adds a higher resolution textures available on the PC version, some boosted effects work, and the use of HDR and Dolby Atmos 3D audio. Both are first for the game. I am actually really stoked to, re to try this out, and since my receiver doesn't actually support Dolby Atmos, when I get my taxes back, I'm purchasing another receiver to actually take advantage of all of this. I have a 4K set, and the game looks great. The PS4 Pro version is a gorgeous game and it deserves the praise that it got on that console. But the caveat here is that I, since I purchased both, cons both consoles and have the uh, Xbox One version of the game, I get a new upgrade. Okay, now back to another topic at hand. We have Star Wars Battlefront. This game is getting a lot of slack lately. This is Star Wars Battlefront 2, actually. And it's mostly due to the fact that this game's got some really shady microtransactions with a pay-to-win scheme. Everyone, for the most part, dislikes microtransactions. These microtransactions, in some games, give a, an advantage to a player who has deep wallets. The uh, effect of this is pretty widespread, and it's it's down it's it's down to a matter of whether you want free DLC, you want this and this to match up with exactly um, your your play style, or the amount of time you actually have available to play the game, and everything and everything else. But the way this uh, tiered system is laid out is uh, um, designed for <laughs> if you want to spend big money. Uh, the big money involved in this game just is involved with the with the cards. The cards themselves actually um, give you an advantage. You earn these through progression, but if you want that progression max out of the way, fork over your wallet. And it's pretty 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 shady, especially if you have the game at launch. You could practically just throw 100 bucks extra on top of the game and have air all the content unlocked and ready for you. This is a kind of shady practice that is in the mobile market. The mobile market has this for a reason because the games are free on that con on that platform and that platform has to make money somehow. But we'll see how this unfolds here a little bit later. And again, thank you for watching and enjoy your night.